Good morning. It's 837 Finger Lakes Morning News. A far cry from techno music. As uh, we welcome in John Katko, who's running for Congress in the 24th District, uh, making his, I think, uh, third appearance on this show. I, I can't really keep track. Uh, but, uh, John, good to see you again. Good to see you, too. And it is indeed my third appearance. It is. That's what I thought. All right. So it's, uh, I guess I still have a few brain cells left. Um, you were a former federal prosecutor. We covered in your first appearance uh, your background at length. And I asked you before we started here this morning if you miss the courtroom. Do you? Absolutely. But as I told you, it's uh, fun doing interviews because the person doing the interview, that being you, is kind of like the judge firing questions at me. And I've got to be on my toes to be able to answer the questions in a certain way. So that's good. That, that, makes, that, that, that's, that, that scratches that itch a bit for me. But well, I, I do miss it somewhat. Then I don't feel so bad about having a black robe in my back seat. <laughs> uh, we, we are now more than halfway through the campaign and, and we're uh, more than halfway through summertime and uh, it, it seems things are starting to heat up on your end and starting to heat up on uh, Dan Maffei's end as well. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and it's amazing how much I've learned in such a short period of time being a new candidate. And uh, it's, been a, it's been a wonderful experience. And there's no doubt that we're, we're, we're getting some wind at our back and we're really starting to pick up steam as a campaign. When we first talked, I think it was uh, not long after you got the nomination back in January or February or somewhere Earlier this year, lots change since then. Uh, there are leaves on trees, for example. That's a huge change. What have you learned? This is your first time running for office. Uh, what have you learned from the time that you got the nomination to uh, right now? We don't have enough time to talk about all I've learned. I can tell you some of the things I have learned is it's amazing how many people in the committee party system uh, help, are, are there to help. I mean, just in the Republican Party alone in, the, in, the, in our district, uh, four county district, there's about over 800 committee people that work day in and day out, volunteer basis just to help out and just, you know, do the, all the nitty gritty things from everything from passing petitions to help selecting candidates to getting out the vote. That's one of the probably most heartwarming things. I've seen is how many people are dedicated, you know, on both sides. The Democrats have the same type of thing, and it's a true testament to the fact that democracy is alive and well in our country, and a lot of people think they see the end product, the commercials, and think that the system's broken, but so far, what I've seen is that there's an awful lot of grassroots on our side, and, and it's uh, been encouraging. You know, the other thing I've, I've realized is it's far more complicated an endeavor than you could ever imagine. If you think of it this way, you have to create a business model, Start up a business, raise the cash and funds for the business, execute your business plan, execute uh, the, the, the financial plan, and then wrap it all up in 10 months. So it's really uh, a, a very it's, – it's a fascinating exercise, and it's uh, extremely, uh, extremely complicated. And you have to spend a lot of time on the road going to different parts of the 24th District. How do you balance that and uh, life at home? Well, that's a great question. Um, my wife and my kids are used to me uh, having a crazy schedule because being an organized crime prosecutor for 20 years, when a trial's on, you go home to sleep and that's about it. So uh, they're used to that type of dedication I've had to have in public service. And so uh, they're used to it. But uh, you, you balance it. And you know what's nice is I've been taking my older son, who's 19, who's interested in politics, with me a lot. And he's been having a ball. So it's been it's 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 actually overall been a very good experience for my family you guys you get to meet a lot of people along the way what are we may have talked about this the last time you were on what are some of the common things that you're hearing from people in the district uh issues that they would like to see focused on in washington oh geez there are, you know the jobs and the economy are, are, are top of the list uh, as always i mean i, I can't tell you my people i've talked to and who are worried about their jobs and are worried about the economy in central new york and worried about the continual uh, drain of um, of the young talented people that are leaving the area for, for greener pastures i mean well, that's one of the reasons i got into this campaign i i want my kids to settle back here just like i did and uh uh, they need to have the economic opportunity to do so, and uh, that's a big concern. And probably the biggest thing I've heard is the business environment in New York State is terrible. It's very hard to make a go of it in New York State with all the regulations and all the taxes. And that's why you see businesses, especially manufacturing businesses, which are at the lifeblood of the middle class, are 
are leaving here. We're losing another 300 jobs in Auburn. And those are the types of things we're hearing. And, and th- that and the fact that nothing's getting done in Washington and there's no, and everybody's to blame. The president, the Republicans, and the Democrats. Everyone's wrong and by not being able to get things done in Washington. And that's another thing I'm hearing on a regular basis. So how does one person change all that? Well, I, I think you're going to start with the premise by flipping that around. you got to say to yourself, uh, you, you can't accept the, the premise that not one person can't make a difference. You can't accept that. You got to say that you can go down there and start being part of the, the solution. So that's that's number one. And number two, you've got to go down to Washington, in my opinion, and you've got to be able to be committed to uh, your principles and not sacrificing your principles, but also working with the other side and engaging the other side. They're not doing that now. We have a president who simply set, has has written off Congress and, and d- doesn't do anything other than snipe with them. And we have Congress that snipes with each other in the parties, and we have people in each party that are afraid to even sit down and talk with the other side, which is crazy. And one of the masters of doing that was Ronald Reagan. And one of his biggest nemesis was Tip O'Neill. And one of his best friends was Tip O'Neill. So, and they got a lot done. If you go back and look over the course of their time, they got a lot done. And Tip O'Neill was a hardcore liberal and Reagan was a hardcore conservative. And they got it done. And it, it, it can get done. And you look back on a little bit lesser scale, but still it's the same example. During President Clinton's time, he worked very hard with Newt Gingrich and they got some things done. So... It can be done. So even though it looks bleak now, I absolutely positively believe it can get done. If the kind of colloquy that existed between Reagan and O'Neill existed today, would Washington be in better shape? Would we be in better shape? Absolutely. We wouldn't have Obamacare in its current form, for example. That was rammed through on a partisan basis, and it's a mess. Now, if you have sat down on both sides and thought about, you know, what we have a problem with health insurance in our country, let's sit down together and figure out how to do it. Absolutely would have a better product than what we have now. And that's why Obamacare is such a mess. Our guest is John Katko, who's uh, running for Congress in the 24th District on the Finger Lakes Morning well, News. Not running on the Finger Lakes Morning News. We're talking to him on the Finger Lakes Morning News. Got to make that very clear. You mentioned a few minutes ago that uh, part of the problem are Republicans. That might not endear you to uh, Republicans who might not have uh, opened up their wallets. Uh, But, I mean, I don't know how to phrase it. Do you find that that level of honesty and and openness on the campaign trail, do you think that'll translate? If you win, will will, will you be as uh, honest about both sides of the system as you have been on the campaign trail. Yes, and you know what? It, it, the people in Washington get it, too. Uh, believe it or not, I was just down there last week, and the leadership is saying the same thing. They're saying, look, that is a narrative you have to pursue. They understand it. They understand the perception. Um, I, it's not as one-sided. It is absolutely is not as one-sided. I'll give you an example. I mean, everyone's talked about the House Republicans. Well, the House has sent 321 bills uh, over to the Senate. 321 bills that are sitting there that haven't been acted upon in this term alone. So, and that's a democratically controlled Senate. Nothing's going on over there either. So it's both sides and uh, they recognize it too. And they recognize it's got to get better, you know? And uh, so I, 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 to answer your question, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think so. I think people are, are sick and tired of the sniping and they just want to hear from people that they're going to they're gonna be pragmatic and go down and get things done. Ronald Reagan always said, I'll take 60% now and I'll keep working on the other 40%. I love that. that, that that's a good way to operate. So uh, answers over arguments. Right. Let's, uh, let's talk about endorsements. You were recently endorsed by the Veterans Party. I, I, I was, and I'm very proud of that because um, that's one of the other rewarding aspects of what I've been able to get involved in since I, I got involved in this campaign. The veterans uh, the organization in our district is, is quite substantial. There's about 30,000 veterans, and I've done uh, over a dozen parades, and they're peppered throughout those parades wearing their hats and on the sidelines they're watching and you know, going over and shaking their hands and thanking them for the service is probably one of the most uh, inspiring things I've done because oftentimes they get a tear in their eye, and that's, that's pretty cool you know, it, it, that you can touch somebody in that way just by thanking them. And it made me realize that these veterans are, uh, are not always treated as well as they should be. 
And so I've been working very hard with them. I came out with a five-point plan for veterans and ensuring that veterans are on my staff now, and they will be if I when if and when I get elected, and they will be handling they'll be responsible for hand, handling the veterans' issues. So they will never get swept under the rug. What's the plan? Well, the plan is to have them on the staff with me. The plan is to have them on, the, you know, any constituent calls regarding veterans are going to go to these individuals. These individuals are going to have some specialties and know how to deal with them. And they're going to have a little more skin in the game because they're a veteran themselves. So we're going to have that. We're going to make sure that if any disability claims for veterans go longer than they should, that we're going to intervene for them on a, and we have a system set up to do that. So it's not going to, it won't get, uh, they won't get backlogged. We're going to advocate for, Many programs for veterans, including what just got passed, which I'm very proud of, is the um, the veterans uh, bill. And, and that bill included uh, uh, the option to allow veterans that live 40 miles or more from a veterans uh, t- t- health care facility to to get treatment from a private uh, practitioner, which is great for them. You know, we don't have to, that cuts down on the wait times. And also, I'm just hoping I can. Use, I'm hoping against hope to use my prosecutorial skills, my investigation skills, to help get to the bottom what happened with the Veterans Administration uh, scandal and not just because this bill passed, say it's over, hold people accountable because that's the best way of learning what happened and kind of getting into the details of the Veterans Administration so we can make it better and stronger than it's ever been. You are running in an age of the Internet. You've taken advantage of social media. You're on Twitter. I think you're on Instagram as well. Uh, tell me about, uh, about the role that social media plays in trying to reach out to that younger demographic that uh, might not pay attention to more traditional media platforms well i i think you know the market is, i've learned all these terms like segmented markets and stuff which i never knew as a prosecutor but <laughs> the, the, let's face it as you well know the media market is highly segmented now the number of people watching network television is lower and lower um uh, uh, young younger individuals don't even have home telephones anymore they have cell phones most of them don't even watch cable or or have cable tv they watch their tv programs you know, by you know uh, Netflix or something like that. So you've got to figure out different ways to reach them, and and a big aspect of that is the the, the internet and the media, the, the, the Facebook and uh, Twitter and Instagram, and then you know kind of tailing your your. Uh, uh, phenomenon, but it is something we have to do. And as far as reaching the the, the younger individuals, I am like a grandfather on my campaign staff. <laughs> I'm 51 years old. I have uh, and the fellow with me in the studio today is a highly talented kid, Justin Sales, and he's 24 years old. He's been a veteran of politics for almost 10 years. So uh, um, he 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 knows more about politics on a small finger than I do. And uh, he's uh, you know, we have great great young uh, individuals with us who are helping us uh, tap into that market for sure. You're only 51. 51. Why, do I look older? No, you're only, <laughs> oh man, you're only 21 years older than I am. Oh man, that, that makes, okay, I, so you're old enough to be my son too, great. <laughs> I guess that makes me the uncle of this, right. uh, of, of this routine. We're talking with John Katko, who's running for Congress. Uh, the 24th District, as we've talked about a couple times, it's a, it's a large area. Uh, what are some, uh, in traveling around the district, all of Cuca County, all of Onondaga County, and uh, was it parts of, it's all of Wayne and parts of Oswego, is Correct. that right? The western half of Oswego, including the city of Oswego. So we're talking about a lot of rural areas, a lot of rural parts of New York where agriculture is, is big. What are some of the things you're hearing about agriculture? Well, a lot of it has to do with the labor issues. It's amazing with the, the immigrant labor issues, and that's one of the things I'm, I'm trying hard to work on. My father-in-law was a, is a, was a lifelong potato farmer in the southern tier, and so I've been dating my wife since she was 17 and I was 18 and at freshman at Niagara University. And so I've been going down there, and uh, he, I did everything from clean the migrant camps and get them ready to go for the season and everything. So I really understood the the need for good quality seasonal labor and it's unbelievable the amount of red tape that the, the, the agricultural community has to go through just to get uh, the, the the seasonal uh, labor, immigrant labor help and that's something that any immigration reform has to be taken into account uh, and that's one of the things I'm hearing it's the cost and the and the burden of trying to do it is 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 very frustrating for these farmers and that's a big thing and you know regulations uh, having the OSHA standards come into the dairy farmers that's another big thing and uh, but overall I think that the biggest single issue for the farmers is probably the immigrant uh, issue we are a little more than four months away from election day so what do you do between now 
And uh, the time the polls close. Sleep less and work more. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we're just, you know, the bottom line is it's about getting your message out and just going out and seeing people and, and, and letting them uh, kick the tires, so to speak, and see who you are and just interact with people. I think that's really important. I think that's a big thing that separates me from my opponent. He, uh, that's not his forte. His forte is raising money. My forte is getting down and, uh, you know, rolling up my sleeves and talking to people, meeting with people, taking uh, interviews, uh, taking the fire and, and uh, letting them size me up. We're going to do between now and the, the the election. How is the money situation for the campaign? It's great. I mean, we started out uh, March first is when I got the nomination, uh, come the Republican nomination, and at that point I had zero money in the bank, and uh, my opponent had nine hundred thousand dollars. And uh, in the four ensuing months, I've raised uh, about four hundred thirty thousand dollars, and uh, he's raised some more. But we've closed the gap from one hundred to one deficit to about a four to one deficit, and and we're going in the right direction. Much more than half of his money has come from outside of New York State. Well, more than half. Ninety-eight uh, percent of my money has come from this area, and so I hadn't even touched the outside money. And, uh, you know, so that's that that most certainly will be coming because everyone's excited about this race and they see the momentum building. So we're going to close the gap even more. And uh, we're excited about that. You got the nomination in March. I did. Um, I have to learn how to use a calendar. I think I said January. Well, I, I left my job January 11th. Oh, OK. And then I had to go through the nomination process, which was quite arduous, you know, and uh, uh, they finally made the final decision for the Republican Party. Then I had to work on independent and conservative lines as well. So I got through the, the, the big one was the Republican one, and I got that on, on or about March 1st, I think it was. Wouldn't be the first time this week I've gotten my dates wrong. John Katko <laughs> uh, running for 24th district uh, in Congress. Uh, good luck, and uh, talk to us again before the campaign ends. I'll come out anytime you want. I'm happy to come out as, as often as you'd like because there's no better way for people to judge me than to, uh, um, to, to listen to me uh, interact with people. All right, thank you very much, uh, John Katko. Coming up tomorrow, we'll have more guests on the Finger Lakes Morning News. I'm Joe Salzo on Finger Lakes News Radio.